Garmin LiveScope. Is it worth it? Should you buy the old model or the new model? How do you rig it up? What settings do you use? Let's talk about all that stuff today. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dishes and Fishes where I show you how to cook and set hooks. As you can see, I recently purchased the new Garmin LiveScope and I gotta say, from experience, buy the new model. I actually bought the old model first, rigged it up, took it out in the water, tested it, and my friend, my trusty first mate, who you may have seen in some other videos, he had this new one on his boat. I got to use the new model on his boat on the same lake as I was using the old model. And I gotta say, the new model is light years better than the old one. So if you're gonna get into this live scope stuff and you're serious about it, definitely spend the extra 700 bucks and get the new model because it's technology that's not gonna expire, if you will. It's gonna be worth the money. Let's take a look at how we rigged it up. So rigging up live scope really isn't that difficult. The first thing that you need to do is rig up your power. So as you can see, these two red wires here, these are the power for the unit. We just wired them right to the crank battery here no separate battery no individual battery for it works just fine so we ran the power wires this way underneath the side here and they go to this switch right here now a reason that we put this switch in is because my trusty first mate was reading some stuff that you want to switch directly connected to your Garmin live scope just because different guys online have said that if the unit doesn't have a direct power on and off switch that it constantly draws power from the battery if you just turn the graph off we've noticed that the actual computer light goes out indicating that it's turned off either way it was an easy seven dollar thing to add so battery goes to power switch that goes to fuse panel up front so that switch goes to a fuse panel that's under here. That fuse panel I'm gonna use if I need to add anything else electronic up here. You can wire the Garmin right to the switch if you want to. You don't need the fuse panel. But I wanted that up here in the event that I add new deck lights or anything like that that needs power. So my computer for the Garmin LiveScope is underneath the trolling motor pedal screwed to this wall here. And there's three cables that come out of it. There's the power cable, there's the transducer cable which goes down my trolling motor, and there's this ethernet style cable. It's like the computer cable plugs into the back of the Garmin unit right here. And again, we actually rigged up the LSV32, the old transducer first, tested it, and then it just wasn't as good as the new one, so we took everything apart, re-rigged it. But now we're all set. Let's take a look at the transducer itself. So the first thing I wanna go over is the transducer orientation for front-facing mode. So when you first use LiveScope, it's gonna feel like you're in an episode of the Twilight Zone until you figure it out, and really once you figure it out, you're gold. But rule number one is cord is in the back. Cord is the back of the transducer. So the cord needs to be at the same place as your trolling motor propeller if you're using a trolling motor mount. This is the correct orientation for front facing mode. You can see how it's angled a little bit. There's a few white marks on this mount that I'll show you here. These marks are gonna depend on whether you mount this on the port or the starboard side of your trolling motor. Mine is on the port side. So once you have your orientation figured out, you're ready to go fishing pretty much. I've used all three modes, the front facing, the down facing, and the perspective mode. They're all pretty cool, but the front facing is really the best one and the most useful one, I think. Even in front facing mode, which is what this is in, the back of the transducer still gives you the down scan view underneath the boat if you're gonna cast off the back of the boat just a little bit. But I cast off the front of my boat mainly anyway. If you're fishing 40 or 50 feet of water and you're anchored, Downscan might be what you want to do, but primarily you're going to be in front facing mode. Perspective mode is cool. It's going to allow you to see all the different structure and stuff. Fish are a little bit harder to detect on perspective mode. I think you can see them, but not as clearly as the front facing mode. I plan on using the perspective mode when the fish are spawning on beds to see if I can actually see the depressions in the sediment from the beds. But right now, front facing mode is the key. Another thing is I have my transducer mounted on my trolling motor. I'm getting pretty good at steering my trolling motor with my foot and kind of being able to see where I want to see and stay on the fish even. One thing I've learned though is to really effectively use this, you really kind of need spot lock. I don't have spot lock on this boat, but I found that when I'm live scoping like a piece of structure with fish on it, 
I'm drifting past the structure and it's kind of hard for me to keep my live scope beam right on the fish. With spot lock, you could obviously anchor and keep the live scope right on the structure and kind of finesse them right out of the structure if you want. My trusty first mate and my brother-in-law, Captain Nick, also actually have their transducer mounted on that pole. But their mount, you have to lift the pole, put it in the mount, and you can hand steer it. It's independent of the trolling motor, which is cool. Both those guys have spot lock. I didn't want to buy spot lock this year. I was content with the purchase of just live scope. So I'm gonna rock it out on the trolling motor this year. It's still awesome but just another thing that you should be aware of during this whole process. If you guys have any questions that I didn't answer in this explanation, leave them in the comments and I will respond. Let's take it out in the water. So it's a little windy out here today. I'm gonna do my best to show you the basic settings on Garmin LiveScope without dropping my camera in the water. So let's look at it. So you can see I'm kind of positioned, my transducer is facing the bank. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. So there's three main settings on the Garmin LiveScope. First is the distance that the beam is going out. Second is the gain it's kind of similar to the exposure on a camera or the detail of the beam. And third is the depth. You can see they all say auto right now. I've played around with these settings quite a bit. There's not really a whole lot of times where you want them to not be auto. You can see there's a fish right there or a little school of fish, they're gone now. The transducer comes from right here. Here's directly under the transducer. Here's behind the boat a little bit and here's front towards the bank. You can see here's the slope. Here's the bank, beam no longer reads anything. So right now, it's the beam is too far. So I could shorten the beam. And now I have a better picture of the entire bank. When it doesn't say auto here, it will stay in whatever settings that you choose. So for instance, if I jack up the gain, see how it kind of blows out the picture? Garmin LiveScope will also pick up any leaves. It'll pick up bubbles in the water. It's extremely sensitive. So I found that the gain around 70, 66 to 70 is best. But honestly, the computer does an amazing job of auto adjusting it. So I've just left it on auto and it does just fine. I've noticed that if the sun is beaming down into the water and you point the LiveScope towards it, it'll blow out the image similar to how a picture will get blown out if the exposure is too high. The distance is really the only one that I ever mess with, but if you're zoomed too far out, it won't give you a nice clear image of your bait as I'll show you here. So I'm gonna decrease the distance. There's a few other things that you can adjust if you go to menu, sonar setup, appearance. You can adjust the color scheme. As you can see, mine is moss. I kind of dig that color. There's all different sorts of palettes that you can choose from. And the other thing is if you change your transducer positioning, you go to installation, orientation, and then you can choose down to imaging, perspective imaging. Sometimes the computer will like lag when it changes the view for you. So this is how you can manually change the view. One of the biggest differences between this transducer and my old one is the ability to see your bait. So I'm gonna throw this little tiny hair jig out. Super, super small. So you can see the hair jig right there falling. There's me moving it. This transducer does a phenomenal job of picking up your bait. So I'll throw it one more time. It's kind of cool because like, if you see a fish 70 feet out, you can kind of plop it right in front of them. The transducer, there it just landed. See it sinking right there? The transducer will pick it up in an awesome, awesome way. And fish look extremely detailed, so I'll jig it up. Amazing detail. And when I had the old transducer, I found that I could barely see my bait. So for that alone, this is totally worth buying the upgrade. So you can kind of see how big the hair jig appeared on this screen. There's no doubt when you see fish because, I mean, even that hair jig looked pretty big. So I'm gonna throw a pretty big bait now, a jerk bait. So you can see it there at 20 feet. 15 feet, 
And another amazing thing about LiveScope is you can see fish follow your bait. Now it's at 25, 15, 10. Big baits are really easy to see. But I was cranking earlier this week and I was able to see the fish following the crankbait, but I was able to see him eat it. Can I crank bait? Bigger fish right there, see it? Oh, here's a dude. Here's a, another fit, couple fish up here. He's right there. See him? Yeah. I'm right behind him. Oh, he's coming back for my bait. I'm sinking. He's going towards it. Yeah, I want to use my bait. Yes, sir. Come on. <laughs> Nikki. Got him. Nice dude. Yeah, my it's a trout? Is that a trout, dude? It is. Is that a lake? Trout? I do. That's awesome, man. That's um, what Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lake trout, bro. <laughs> no. <laughs> nice Laker. Dude, that's what must be what those are in live. Dude, that is awesome. Is that a boy? <sighs> On the hair. Hair, you good there? You need help. Awesome. It's turning out to be awesome, yeah. Hell yeah, it is. So that's pretty much it guys. If you fish a lot, if you put a lot of time on the water, you should definitely invest in live scope because it's a technology that I think is not gonna go away. If you're a tournament angler, I think it's a no brainer. You need live scope to compete really. If you're a pleasure boater, you got extra money, you could buy it, it's pretty cool. But I think unless you're fishing heavily, there's really no point in investing in live scope. That being said, if you are a fisherman and you're fishing heavily and a lot like I do, yes buy it and buy the new one it's been a great way to see if the fish actually are interested and they come up and examine my baits i'm really looking forward to seeing the fish when they're suspended and being able to target them specifically and uh, getting bites that way if you like this video be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you have any questions about live scope leave them in the bottom and i'd be happy to answer them thanks for watching